Gamers, today I made a little patch in uh, in about an hour that I think it could perhaps improve the game. Hopefully the developers see it and maybe add some of these. Uh, I didn't spend hours and hours and hours thinking about these, so uh, you know there might be some things you guys disagree with or don't like, but I think most of these would um, would be pretty good for the game. So let's get started. First thing I would add into the game, if possible is I would add Mega Random Nomad Ranked Ladder. Even a quick match, doesn't have to be ranked, just ladder. I would love that. I think people would love that if you go on custom games, it's like the most played custom game right now. There's Nomad free for all all the time and I think this would be amazing. This would be amazing for stream content and I personally would love it. Number two. So right now the Imperial Economy upgrades cost 300 food, 700 gold. Nobody ever gets them. They're useless. They're trash. I think that if we bring that cost down a little bit, they're going to be paying off sooner. So maybe people are going to be getting them and actually use them because right now they're completely unusable. All right. Uh, this is for mining camp, lumber, mill and mill upgrades like the, um, you know, next one. Towers cost 125 wood. Uh, I think that right now every single sieve is making towers everywhere and they're using it for map control which is I think is great but it's not really used like smart it just people are just spamming towers everywhere and they should cost a bit more they're very hard to take down I think especially if you upgrade them and just buffing that cost a little bit is not gonna change the game but it will make it more committable it will impact the tower rushing a bit which a lot of people have been disliking and, and complaining about um and that's something that personally i would like to see uh because of that are we supposed to see something yes you can, you can see it right there at the, at the top next change i would like to see in the game is stone walls moved to castle this is already uh, something that's done in tournaments. If you guys don't know, every single tournament's banned stone walls in feudal. There's no real counter to stone walls. Uh, technically, you can destroy them while they're being built, but once they're built, you, the only thing you can take them out is ramps, and that's not an option at a high level. And I just think stone walls should be moved to castle. Uh, these are general, by the way. So these are not civ specific. These are general. Next one is water combat is pretty bad in the game right now so my suggestion is something that i've been suggesting for a while add the rock paper scissor combat similar to what we have on the ground add that for the water uh rock paper scissor is spearman kills horsemen horsemen kill archers archers kill spearmen and water needs something like that right now there's too big of an imbalance between certain civs like delhi and abyss and ships just suck and there's nothing that is gonna make them viable they just suck so I think there should be, I don't know, like an arrow ship, like a Hulk based Springle ship and then like a fast demo ship and they counteract each other. Like the arrow ship kill the demo ship, demo ship kills the, the Springle ships uh, and then Springle ships kill the arrow ships. I think something like that is needed. I don't think there's ever going to be balanced water combat otherwise and I think something needs to be done there. Uh, next one is... Uh, something I mentioned recently on stream, I think rams should cost less. I, I thought about maybe 200 wood, but maybe 200 is a, a too little. Maybe 225, but I think 250 wood. With the recent changes, with the castle rushing, with the amount of towers, I don't think uh, uh, rams costing 250 wood would be too big of a deal. And another idea that I had that I didn't put here, it was actually my idea. I saw someone actually in my chat brought it up a couple of uh, days or weeks ago. Uh, maybe rams being constructed uh, without research in your own town center radius would be a cool idea. So that would make it so that you couldn't ram push your opponents because rams move so slow it would take forever to move across the map. But if you could build rams within your main TC area to defend tower rushes, uh, without researching siege engineering, I think would be pretty cool. So that's another idea. I didn't put it down here, but there it is. Next one, let's move into specifics. Um, English. Uh, I think English, the number one thing that uh, I would do if I could fix 
uh, the attack speeds from the network of castles does not work properly on all the units. Some units actually gain less attack speed. Uh, some units have correct attack speed. And I didn't do too many changes for English because once this gets fixed, English might be a lot, a lot better. So I don't have any specific numbers, but for example, uh, some unit gets like 13% attack speed instead of 25%. And obviously that's a massive difference and it's hard to say where English would be if those auras applied correctly. And also I think that a network of castles should not affect siege units uh, because it's a little bit too crazy with the trebs. Next one is, um, this is specifically for castle English. I think villagers produced from King's Palace should cost less. Initially I thought 30 food, but maybe 30 is a little bit too low. So uh, I'd like to see English have uh, villager production from King's Palace, which is the H3 landmark, cost 40 food instead of 50. English struggles the most in castle, and I think this would be a nice little buff. It wouldn't be insane, but it would be a nice little buff uh, for them and once these two are kind of fixed and sorted uh, Perhaps English would need a bigger buff perhaps not who knows, but uh, I don't think anything extreme for English is needed right now uh, Because they're Kind of in a little bit of a weird spot and I think these two things would do quite a bit next one French Boom, I am NOT a fan of the chivalry cost increase. It doesn't really affect uh, lower leagues I think as much what it does affect is high level quite a bit. Uh, I think French got worse quite a bit in, at a high level because of the cost of chivalry. They got increased to like 100 wood at 200 gold. Instead, what I think would be a better change uh, that I saw Marine Lord suggest, the cost of chivalry gets reverted and then knights can only heal if they're not moving and if they're not in combat. So you can't run around with French knights and heal the whole time. You have to, once you take damage, you have to put them somewhere AFK and they cannot be active so they can heal up and then go. This is, in my opinion, a proper way to nerf French Knights because it still allows people to go for early healing, but you don't get the insane mobility that French Knights have right now because they can just run around while healing and just killing everything. French now have Culverins in Imperial Age. This is something I never understood why they don't have it, but they 100% should have it. Um, I think French late game is pretty bad, if you look at it from every Civ point of view, and I think giving French Culverins, no matter which landmark you go for, I think would be pretty, pretty good. And another thing is, uh, if you go for College of Artillery, uh, you should be able to create Royal uh, Artillery Normal Workshops as well. Uh, because basically that landmark as it is now is just a workshop that has your siege units do 20 more damage. I don't think it's enough. It's an Imperial landmark that's insanely expensive and it just doesn't give that much. Uh, even if you wanna produce mass siege, you or, you know, you, you have to produce only from Royal Academy or College of Artillery um, and it's too slow and I think this would be a nice like quality of life thing without necessarily breaking the game or doing whatever. Uh, I don't think other than this, I don't think French needs any massive changes or, or buffs or nerfs. I think these two would kind of balance them out a little bit, especially in Imperial, nerf them in Feudal, but not make them completely, completely useless, uh, AK Chivalry. Next one is, I think Rus uh, is a pretty decent Civ right now. The only thing that I don't like is how useless Kremlin is. So this is my suggestion for Kremlin. Kremlin, Kremlin now provides 30% bonus wood gathering. Uh, Right now it provides 20%, just like wooden towers. So what I would like to see is Golden Gate is probably the strongest or second strongest landmark in the game right now. You never, ever, ever, ever go Kremlin. Uh, is this going to make people go Kremlin? Probably not, but I can see the situation where this is a thing. Um, especially if you want to maybe open, like, want to open double TC or focus on feudal aggression. I can see this being a thing. And... The reason why I say reduce radi radius a bit so that you can't put Kremlin on like in between two wood lines that are super far away and you get access to both. So this is something that, you know, I see as like a, it's a tower. It maybe protects defensive gameplay, allows you to go second DC faster. Um, again, I don't think it's going to become the meta. I don't think it's going to become OP, but it gives a little bit more incentive for people to perhaps try Kremlin. And... Um, and go for it. I don't really have, like I said, any other changes for Roos. I think overall they're pretty 
well balanced sieve. I'm, I'm, their fishing ships are way too strong, but I don't want to get too much into the water balance because I think it's a very, very complicated issue right now. Next one is Mongols. Uh, Mongols, in my opinion, are really, really bad now, and these are my suggestions for them. Uh, Mongols should start, in my opinion, with an extra villager. Why? There's a very simple reason for this. When you spawn with a Mongol, by the time you set up your TC and it unpacks and you start making a villager, your opponent is already a worker ahead. That's how the game works right now. Uh, the opponents are just a worker ahead from the get-go. If you are a Mongol, and I don't think that's fair. And we've seen this recently where every Civ hits feudal before Mongols, and it's just Mongol feudal age is so much slower compared to the other civs, and even Mongol castle is becoming harder to reach. So, yeah. Uh, I think Mongols should be more balanced around e e economic play and around nomadic kind of perspective rather than just I'm all inning, I'm towers, and I'm doing nothing else. But you have an Uvu plus 2.5 villagers, Uvu sucks. Like, I'll be honest, Uvu sucks. It's only usable in castle. If you use stone from Uvu in feudal, you basically have nothing going on in castle. And I don't think that um, Uvu is is that good of a an argument. Like I I would I would prefer to be able to only build Uvu in feudal and it started with an extra villager because it will allow you to get faster feudal quite uh, quite fa quite a, quite a lot faster. Uh, next one is, oh, I have an interesting idea for this. Um, this is something that maybe I mentioned on the stream, maybe I didn't. This is uh, my original idea. Um, I think that Mongols are nomadic sieve, but you don't really see them moving buildings too much. And I think this would be a good start. So what I would like to see is that Gur, aka their drop off building, has a bounty system, kind of like Rus where the more resources you drop off at a certain GUR, so each GUR would have this specific uh, uh, like bounty, whatever you want to call it. The more res resources you drop off, the more resources bonus you get dropped off at that specific GUR. So for example, if you make a GUR at the start of the game, the moment you drop off any thousand resources, you will get an extra 5% drop off on that GUR. At 3,000 resources, you will be getting extra 10% resources on that GUR. And at 5,000 resources, you will get an extra 15% drop off on that GUR. So what would this do? Uh, this would buff Mongol economy because I think it's quite terrible compared to the other sims right now. And it would also force people, not force, you don't have to do it, but better players will be able to run with their GURs around the map and get the maximum out of it. You're not gonna just be building curves anywhere, doesn't matter. And on the other side, the opponents would have a counterplay where they wanna snipe the curves so that they kinda, you know, screw over your economy uh, a little bit. And then there's also value of each curve that you make so that you wanna keep them alive, you wanna keep it going. No, 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 the bonuses are like at, at, three, at 1,000 resources, you get 5% extra resources. At 3,000 resources, you get 10% extra, not 5 plus 10. It's just 10. So it goes from 5 to 10 and from 10 to 15. Um, some civs already have this mechanic, aka Abbasid, where in Imperial, they research a thing and like all their villagers drop off 8% extra uh, everywhere. So I don't think this is too insane or too huge. Even uh, Rus have 20% extra wood like at the start of the game. So yeah. If you think about some of what the other civs have, like Rus Passive Gold, uh, Chinese 20% drop of on Imperial officials, I don't think this is that crazy. And I would like to see it personally, because it would promote, I think, cool play. Next one, only for Gur or Step Readout 2? Only for Gurs. Step Readout also gets already gets a bonus. Um, next one, double villager production from Uvu now costs 120 stone instead of 150. Again, Mongol eco play is pretty trash right now. No one's using this ever. I have never seen anyone at a high level use this. And would people use it at 120 stone instead of 150? Maybe not, but I think incentive uh, should be there uh, for it, at least as an option, right? If you see Mongols producing double villagers, you know they're going more eco, so then you know they're not gonna be aggressive. Uh, next one is Delhi. Tower of Victory sucks, 
there's nothing, uh, no way around it. Um, I think the Tower of Victory should affect all units. So right now Tower of Victory only affects infantry. That's it, it doesn't affect cavalry, doesn't do anything else. I think maybe making it so that it increases attack speed of 50% instead of 20, but affecting all units except Siege would be good. Obviously, uh, I know a lot of you are thinking elephants are now gonna have 15% attack speed. Well, hold up, hold up. We got more changes. Healing is not stackable anymore. Uh, I put this under Delhi, although this is more of a general thing. Healing being stackable is insane. I've said this for a long time. Healing should not stack. Healing is when 10 scholars are healing one elephant. It's unkillable. That should not happen. One scholar should only be able to heal one unit and no other scholar should be able to add on to that. So I think the healing is a bit ridiculous right now in AoE 4. And the last one, tower elephants now have a siege unit tag. Um, siege... Uh, unit tag would allow elephants to actually have a counter in terms of springholds. You could go also the other way where elephants would have armor tag so that crossbows counter them. Uh, but melee elephants are actually countered by uh, crossbows because they're armored. But tower elephants don't have a tag and they don't have any counters. In castle, they don't have a counter. In imperial, they have hand cannoneers, uh, they have bombards, uh, culverins even counter them. But in castle, there's nothing. So I think giving them on a siege unit or an armor tag would be really good. Although I would prefer if they have a siege tag and then the melee elephants have an armor tag like they do now so that crossbows counter them, then siege counter tower elephants. Now, another thing that I actually forgot to put here, I would like, uh, I don't have it written down, but I would like if the war elephants, which are the melee elephants, have splash damage that hits up to three or five units. Maybe something like Lentschitz, uh, AK Lenkrenek. Uh, I think right now the War Elephants are complete trash and they should be given an AoE attack, uh, like a cone attack in front of them to make them usable and a bit more... Uh, I mean, just, just to make them better. I, I think even if you would give them a splash attack, they wouldn't be OP because crossbows um, counter them. So they would have counterplay, unlike tower uh, elephants right now. That's it for Delhi. The next one is Abbasid. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know the exact numbers for this, uh, but I think Abbasid should get Lancers removed. I think Abbasid should not have Lancers. I think Camel Riders should take their spot and they should be made somehow a replacement for Lancer. Not quite as good as Lancer versus uh, non-cavalry, and then he should rinse cavalry. Uh, I don't know the exact stats. Uh, I don't have the numbers. I didn't look into it too much. Like I said, it took me like an hour or two to think of these changes. But right now, Lancers cost 140 food, uh, 100 gold, and Camel Riders cost 180 food and 60 gold. Uh, so what I would like is for their cost to either get reduced or their stats to be buffed a little bit. But I do find it weird that uh, Abbasid have horsemen, lancers, and camel riders. In my opinion, it doesn't make much sense. So uh, I would prefer if camel riders, even if they stay as they are, but maybe their cost goes down to 140 food and even 60 gold or 70 gold and just kind of have you know, that's their Lancer, where it's not as good for raiding, uh, but it can still raid and it's good uh, anti-cavalry unit. Uh, Lancers and Camel Riders do not have the same use. That is correct. Camel Riders have no use. Um, next one. HRE right now is completely broken. Uh, some people are going to say, just give it time. People are going to figure out. There's nothing to figure out. HRE is completely overpowered. Uh, earlier I played a game, I started castle at 6 minutes, that is insane. Uh, my opponent reached feudal at 5, I started castle at 6. If anyone thinks that's balanced, you are crazy. Um, HRE is completely overtuned. I've said last patch that HRE does not need buffs. It's already in a really, really, really good spot. I thought it was already an S tier civilist patch and now it's just, it's just insane. HRE, as you guys know, at a point has received a prelate start. 
Um, so Atari used to start with six villagers and a scout, like every sieve, and then developers made them start with zero gold, but with a prelate. And at a time, this was fine, because Atari honestly sucked, plus people didn't know how to play it. Right now, uh, Atari is just too strong, they hit feudal too fast, they hit castle too fast, and they hit imperial too fast. I had a game, I think it was yesterday, I started imperial, when was it? At 9.40, I started imperial. Uh, and that's just crazy. So taking away one villager would uh, basically, I think the math right now is because they start with a prelate and six villagers, they're basically starting with eight villagers. Uh, and I know, yes, they start with 100 less gold, but that doesn't matter because the economy's growth is exponential and it, it, it goes through the roof really quick, which was something you can see with HRA. So I think that I like the, the fact that HRA starts with a prelate I don't like that they have six workers with it. It should they should start with five and a prelate minus hundred gold, and this would this would nerf HRE in all the good ways. It would slow them down, which is what they need. Next one, um, prelate production time for Regnus Cathedral uh, should be thirty seconds. I don't know why. So if you guys don't know, prelates cost uh, prelates take 30 seconds to build or take 20 seconds to build now this was fine because they were produced from a tc mainly before now regnus cathedral can produce prelates the problem is their production time is 20 seconds and every other sieve monks scholars whatever are produced in 30. um and i don't see why that's the case right now people are using uh uh, prelates for HRE to use them with their army because their production time is 20 seconds and you make them in the landmark and I think that's, that's something that should just be brought up together with every um, every other sieve and it should be uh, 30 from Cathedral I wouldn't mind if they still produce 20 seconds from uh, TC because you still trade off worker production for a prelate so I think that's fine but Cathedral should be producing them in 30 like every other sieve. Next one is emergency repairs. Um, emergency repairs I think used to be fine but recently with uh, stone being required to repair keeps I think that this is just incredibly overpowered right now because People haven't like caught on to complaining about it yet, but they will. So for example, in order for you to repair a keep with any other sieve, you need to use stone. Well, A3 doesn't. They just use auto repair or, or self repair, whatever it's called, I don't know. And they just, emergency repair. And they just repair a building for free. And back when you could repair with wood, that wasn't an issue, right? It was still really good, but it wasn't an issue. Now, it's a little bit too strong. So what I would like to see is, right now the emergency repair cooldown is 60 seconds, but the cooldown starts the moment you use the ability. So if I use the ability, the ability lasts for 20 seconds. By the time it's over, the cooldown is 40 seconds, right? So cooldown is technically 40 seconds from when the ability finishes. So I think that this should be a longer cooldown. Uh, to make it 90, so basically when the cooldown is done, it will be 70 seconds until you can use it again. Um, yeah, anyway, next one. Uh, emergency repair on Cathedral. I don't know if you guys know, but emergency repair does not work on Regnitz Cathedral. And that's just... It needs to be fixed. Nothing else uh, to say about that. Palace of Fabia should, in my opinion, cost the original cost. Um, I I don't know why out of all the landmarks in the game this landmark costs less. Um, like right now it costs like 1.9k and then 900. I don't know why it is the single uh, most impactful landmark regarding economy so it doesn't really make any sense to cost less. Um, because it's too, too strong right now and I mean I'm one of those people like you guys know my favorite sieve is HRE but right now they're way too strong um, and something needs to be done about them like I often don't even get any units in castle with HRE I just go straight to Imperial and then even if you lose workers it doesn't really matter um, so for HRE I think uh, 
I wouldn't necessarily do Palace of Swabia nerf and starts with one Veles Villager, but I think one of those should be a thing. Preferably starts with one less Villager. Um, I think that would probably help a lot with Atory booming and, and getting to Castle and, and Feudal and Imperial Ritter really fast. Um, but all these changes, by the way, I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, they don't necessarily need to be all in the game at the same time, but some of them, I think, would help the civs or help the game in some way. And the last change is Chinese, which you guys are going to love. Are you guys ready? Wow, look at this fix. Are you guys ready? If Barbican is placed within 20 or whatever number, 30 tiles from your opponent's base, it now takes twice as long to build. Barbican Rush is fixed. There we go. This is easy to do. You know why it's easy to do? Because they've already done it with Mongol TC. They can do it with Barbican Rush as well. It wouldn't take a lot of technology to be done. So I think this is something that uh, would be very easy fix for them to do and fix it. Someone says this is a band-aid fix. How's that a band-aid fix? It, you literally can't barbecue and rush people then. A band-aid fix is something that technically works, but nothing really changes. This changes things. Uh, what about Kremlin? Well, I've actually been trying Kremlin rushing and the only reason it doesn't work is because of build time. I've actually tried Kremlin Rush with 8 villagers and it doesn't work because it builds too slow. So then I got the idea for Barbican. If you double the build time, it doesn't work. Like, the opponent literally pulled 10 villagers and I can't build it in time. So, yeah. One less villager on H3 is unrealistic. Why? They start with 8 workers right now. Every sim starts with 6. Why is removing one villager unrealistic? Uh, six workers plus a prelate equals to eight workers of gathering time. If prelate buffs six workers, they they gather as if six workers are eight. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these. Uh, I'll probably... I, I was thinking about delaying this. I was like, maybe I'll get some more ideas. But like I said, I thought about this for an hour or two. Figured, why not make a little YouTube video? Kind of my wish list for the game that I think would improve the game in uh, in a lot of ways. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.